We back. We are back at Lewis Engines. Sup guys, so we're back here. Uh, today we're going to finish the RB30, bottom end, fingers crossed, and get stuck into the Neo for the Sony because I really want to get driving again. Um, so Darren's going to help us out as much as he can and we'll see how much we can get done today. Morning buddy. Yeah. Ready to build some engines? Hell yeah. Here we are guys. Oh, I've got Darren some wine too. The perks of uh, working at a winery. <laughs> Morning, buddy. Good. Mate, how you doing? <laughs> Good. Oh, a new machine. Look at this. Jesus. So, what the hell does this do, eh? Uh, cylinder home. Yeah, right. So, yeah, all the stones go on that mantle there. That hangs out of there. Yeah. And, yeah, up and down. And Far out, eh? There's a cross hatch in there. Where'd you get this thing from? Uh, come from the US. So these people in Melbourne got it for me from um, CBO there. They got it from a shop in America. Yep. And uh, yeah, they just put it in a container and brought it out. That easy. <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. So what's the agenda today, mate? Um, we've got to put the pistons on the rods. For yep. RB30, so. We'll put the pistons on the rods and we'll put them in the bore. Oh yeah, that's right. Then we can complete that short motor. Yep. And we'll wash the block on the Neo, the Neo block, and we can start checking stuff for that. Awesome. Yeah. Because we had some goodies arrive for the Neo. So, jeez, you got some RBs on the go. One here, one there. So these are, are these two new ones since I was here last. Um, no, that that one there I've machined up. I'm just waiting for pistons to come for it. That one's a fairly high horsepower. Single overhead cam engine for, oh, yeah. for guys VL, and this one is a short motor for guy in WA. I just got to finish that during the week for him. Yep, and um, it just yeah, crank uh, pistons and rods, and then he's gonna do the rest of it. And um, that one's a speedway out of a wingless um, sprint car, wingless. Jesus, I've just run a V6 Magna engine in. Oh, yep, yep. Um, just yeah, pretty well standard motors there. And that's SR, so I've got to finish that. Porting the head and some Kelford cams and that this week. And this one is finished, so I've got to put it in a box. So I made a crate for it to go in, but the dimensions weren't quite right, so I'm, I'm a carpenter now modifying the box. <laughs> oh, and this is uh, the famous Lewis Sump. Yeah, that's yeah. the Sump. That's yours there for the Neo one here. Oh. Wicked. Yeah. I brought I brought the one I got as well. Yeah, sweet. I sort of had a guess with the fittings and I thought you'd be there, but if Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yep. that doesn't work out, I've got another engine that I'm doing which I can use this on and then I just change the fittings on another sump for you. So. Oh, yeah, right. look at that, yeah. eh? That's awesome. Yeah. So we'll get we'll do a full detailed rundown when I install that on the actual Neo engine. Yeah. Just so you guys understand uh, how Darren makes them and why he makes them the way he has made them. Yeah, they're freaking wicked. So we have um, pistons and rods for the Neo. There's a 625 bolts. Oh, yeah. Wicked. Got to keep them in there. Can't touch them. Like, oh, really? Or you can. But they won't explode. But <laughs> you, you've, you've got moisture on your fingers. Yeah. And any sort of real space agey sort of material. Um, if you touch it, it'll leave um, like a, a stain from the moisture in the, um, on, off your fingers. Yeah, right. And that can cause a crack in the in the metal. Seriously? Yeah, yeah no, I'm thinking. Uh, you, know, you look at a, um, a 625, like a new age head stud, they all come in this nice plastic things. Yeah. And ARP actually tell you don't handle them. Jeez. Hmm. Same, pretty well the same with any metal, you know, like... Uh, like if you had rust on this, yeah, it could start fatigue in that area and, and break. Um, oh yeah, I've never yeah. seen a rod do it, but say a push rod yep. on a overhead valve push rod motor. Some of the push rods I've seen are a bit rusty. They've been sitting in a bit of water or something, and they're pitted and they'll snap right at the right where the rust is. Um, oh, yeah. Valve springs are the worst. If they go rusty, they they do break straight away. I've definitely seen them break from rust. Hydrogen embrittlement, it's called. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh. There you go, pissing. <laughs> yeah. This is exciting. Shiny. 
Jeez. Bit of a shame you're getting dirty. <laughs> it sucks you can't see them. Yeah. Isn't that? Should have a glass, a glass, glass window. block. Glass yeah. Uh, Years ago, people did make a couple of different types of motors. They made plastic rocker covers and things so you could see the rockers. Oh, yeah? Um, and all you could see is just dirty oil everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good theory. <laughs> So the 86.5 mil. Yep. And um, that's oh, awesome. Awesome. Yes, the... That's freaking exciting. This room and then now we can up the power. <laughs> these, these ones here, that's the other ones that came. Oh yeah, the PPM. Those guys sent you those rods here. Yeah. Connecting rods. Have you had a look at these? Child proof. Yeah, I, I have, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're good. A little bit of a different shape yep. to the ones I'm used to using. But um, Got him in some fancy little box. Look at that, looks like a guitar case, doesn't it? It does actually. A little guitar in here. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, they um not a bad. So yeah, they're nice and strong here. Yep. That's a bit of a different shape, you know, like this is a bit ah. pretty strong, look at that. Like Far if you right. bust that you'd Yeah. Run a nitro <laughs> or so they uh so lucky that these bolts that I had the exact length for these. Oh yeah, so true. So they're a three eight. Yep. Thread. Three eight UNF. There. Yep. And um, the exact length for them. Perfect. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's good. Hmm. So that, I'll put that one in there when, when you rang me. I'll put that in to make oh, sure. Oh, just to that make sure. Correct. Yep. And um, yeah, it's got heaps of thread perch in there. Look at that. That's wicked. So that's like over double the amount of thread that you need in. In there, so it comes right to the end of the thread. So you yep. have plenty of holding power in that area there. Wicked, nice. Forty pounds of burst. Eh? Should be, it <laughs> should handle that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, PPM Australia. So they're actually the same rods I got in the Beamer. In my um, right, yep. custom twenty-six billet crank. Yeah. Rod and piston setup in there. So. Yep. That's just a standard length rod with. Uh, uh, so it's 121.5 mil length. Yep. Which is standard length. 2000 bolt, 38. That's what they normally come with, but. Y yeah. Um, I beams, yeah. 300 m material. Don't know what 300 m is, just a type of steel. Hmm, must be. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's exciting. So that's all for the Neo. Uh, of course, we're going to finish the RB30 first. Yep. Um, so we'll get stuck into that, eh? Yeah. Wicked. So what are these? So these are still ACL branded. Yeah. So they're a calico coating, which is a sort of a Teflon style um, coating, which a dry film, which um, is good for anti scuff and um, um, loading on the bearing. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So these are the old style ACL race ones, and then the calico ones have got that coating. Oh yeah. They do. They do change the inside of the. Uh, like where the metal backing is and the layers, they do a few things here. I did read the tech sheet on it. I can't quite remember what they do, but it is a different form yep. in, in here than the older H series. And um, yeah, when I, I read all the article about it, very worthwhile. They're double the price. Oh, they are double. Yeah. So what are they normally? R well, these roughly. Are about, these are about two hundred bucks for mains and rods. Yep. And these are about four hundred. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, good. Well worth it. Yep. Um, yeah. Awesome. So they're actually doing them now. They're, they're sending the, these, ACL making these and sending them all to America. All, all the big bearing companies are buying them. Far out. So they've got their, their, their technique and their system for this Calico stuff worked out real well. All right. Yeah. Let's start building engines, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first job is, well, I'll let you explain. <laughs> yeah, so these are, so what? What happens here is that the front of the piston on these ones is that dot. So you've got inlet valve reliefs and exhaust valve reliefs, and the inlet is on the... Um, so I always relate to it. If I'm sitting in the car, the inlet's on the right-hand side. So the front of the piston's that way. So you're sitting in there, the front of the engine's going that way. And generally everyone wants to put the numbers at the front because most manufacturers put the, a number at the front so you put the rod that way. But... These ones here, the numbers go to the back because there's a spit hole here. So 
when the oil pressure is inside the bearing, the bearing's got a hole in it. Yep. And then that hole there shoots oil out onto the thrust side of the, the um, bore. So it's, um, front of the piston that way, spit oil on every rod's always to the right hand side when you're sitting in the car. Yep. Some rods have a spit hole here where the bearing's got a uh, like a little V there, some V8s and stuff have gone. Yeah. And that'll usually face the cam and spit oil up against the cam. Um, but these ones here, they have that to oil the, the bore, the thrust side of the bore. Yeah, right. So that's continuously spraying up onto the bore. Cool. Mm. So yeah, we'll put those on. So that's the way that goes. I always set them out. I go, right, that goes that way. That's the front. It goes that way, and then once I've got them all sitting in the right spot, then I'll oil the the bushes up in it. Yep. The um, small end, yeah. If it sits out, it behaves. Yeah, these are a fairly tight fit in the, um, like these OEM style pistons. The gudgeon pin's fairly tight in the rods. Whereas your CPs and stuff, they're just a, a, you know, they've probably got about three tenths, four tenths clearance. Yep. Whereas these factory things are really a, a knock-in fit on the pin, which it doesn't matter. Like, it, it doesn't spin as long as the, the bush on the, here is the correct clearance. It all works. So then that, that's the way they go. So we know that's all correct. So we'll get some oil. I just got some Lucas 50 in the oil can there. I'll keep... Old Lucas oil, for, eh? For, for um, like assembly, you know. <laughs> They're gonna be sending you free stuff soon. They should, shouldn't they? <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah. So. Right, yeah, so what's the trick there? Just get just the... get the pin out of the end there, so that it starts to uh, guides the rod bush. Front, spit on to the right, yes we are. So you just oh, locates yeah. it nicely in there so you can sort of line it up. Yep. And then just hold it square. You can feel that it's, it's a bit tricky, man. <laughs> that initial don't want it to catch the rod and cock it because it'll Yep. Just, yeah, it gets tight. You don't want that tight. Can't be tight on that bush. See how that's loose now, it's straight. Yep. So now you can sort of get a bit more. And realistically, you're not hitting that, that hard, nah, really. No, nah. no, nah, nah, that's hardened pin, that's plastic yep. hammer. So, and the pin, the bush is loose, it's straight in there, everything's cool. Yep. So then I can use my leg vice. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to the clip on the other side, don't keep hitting it, you'll hear the sound change. Hear it? Yep. So it's hitting the clip. Don't want to keep belting against the clip. So that's all loose and front. Spit all to the right. We're right there again. Cool. And then you'll put them all in and then do the yeah, other side. Yeah, and then the other clip on yep. the other side, yeah. Yeah. Side and a sharp side. Oh, you did explain this yeah. last time. So the sharp side's got to go out. So what, what happens is the pin always, as this is moving, the pin's sort of belting against the clips. So... If you can imagine it was installed the wrong way with the round to the outside when the pin's hitting that side because this is rounded it's going to tend to want to close the clip up and shoot it out yep so if it's hitting on the round side and this side's sharp when it hits it it's, it bites in the groove better uh, all, okay. all circ clips have got that round, yep. and, round and sharp they're all all internal circ clips have got it yeah make sure you've got the right way around yep so you can notice it pretty easy. The shot. Yeah, yeah. See the. See how that round, oh, roundish. Yeah. So you can see. Yep. It's round. On these, you can see where the pin's been hitting them. It's easy to tell, but that's the sharp side. See. Yep. Some so, are harder to spot than others. Sorry. That's right. Right there. Mm. Then um, you just got to get it in. These are easy, actually. These, um, when you're doing those other clips, you know, like on CPs and stuff, when they got those um, round clips, yep, they're a pain. 
I've got a method I use for a lot of different clips. Yeah, and you just turn it, make sure that it's in the groove. Yep. Everything's in. Even what you can do is uh, just hit it against that clip to make sure the clip's seated. Yep. You can hear it, yep. Just have a real good look at it, you know, like don't if that come out in the motor, it's serious shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen some that, that have come out, people haven't installed them properly. That wouldn't get outside the bore, would it? It just no, scratched it sort the bore. of sits in there and then the pin comes out and it makes a nice groove. Oof. Yeah. So seen one once years ago come out there. I think that's in, isn't it? Mm, looks it. No, it's see how it's not in the groove? It's just sitting out and it falls, you see. So what I'll do is I'll turn it around and I'll just hit it. Yep. And I'll just go pop in. Yeah, there it goes, solid. Now we can see it in, see? Yeah, wow. Well. So you just uh, turn it. Make sure it's in. We'll hit it back the other way a little bit because there's a bit of clearance yeah. in between the clips. Yep. Should have, um, well, the tighter the better, but... The factory um, run a lot of pin and, and play on them, but on a performance piston, you want to keep that as tight as you can so it doesn't try to yep. build at it. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, it's nice and free. It's in the groove. Cool. Yeah. You sort of. Yeah, four more to go. All right. So all the pins are in, and now. Um, Darren's quickly shown me <laughs> how to do the oil. Oh, what is it called? Oil ring. The oil, yeah, yeah. The oil ring. Okay, so you start with this little weird-looking ring, and it's got to go on the bottom because you got your oil ring. Then you got your. What are the two top rings called? You got your right. Uh, oh, the, the very top is the top compression ring. Yep. So compression ring, and then I suppose and then the second ring is the um, scraper or compression ring. Same. Like. Oh, yep, yep. Do, do two things, that second one. And then the third one is the oil ring. So you've got that segment in the center, that wafer. Yep. And then the outer, there's a, a rail on the top and bottom that holds it in there. So they're, they're both, like, there's obviously a whole bunch of them here. It doesn't matter what top, no, what's top, no, what's no, bottom. They don't, they don't go in either way. They're, they're just a, a fit in. Okay. But the top and the se uh, second and the top do have um, dots on them. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So all I do is I hold the separating bit with my thumb. Yeah, put it on near the pin. Yep. And oh, hold, near and hold the it pin. The center. Yep. Yep. So that the two ends are together. So your thumb's holding them together because they'll try to jump out. Yep. And then put the rail, put the bottom one in first. So put it, um, put the gap over here on, yep. the, on that side of the skirt, and then bring it towards the where you're holding it with your thumb. So it goes over the okay. center quickly. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't go around that way. I'd go. Um, oh, so go this way. Yeah. So just sort of put it. You put it right in the center of that gap. Just hard watching somebody do it. Like... Sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, wrong, wrong way. So you want me to go that yeah. way? Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, you... <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to watch. You give it, give it. <laughs> so you got the gap of this of the yep. ring there, and I put my thumb on that because that'll always try to jump out. Yep. So then I. Because you're the opposite hand, it was hard watching what you're doing. So I usually go over this side with the gap, and then uh, then okay. feed it there because it goes straight there and it holds it nicely. Uh, okay. If you go around the other way, it t they tend to want to jump out. Yep. So then you just wind that onto the bottom, and then that's all free there. Keep your thumb on it still because it'll, it'll try to jump out. So if that centre gold wafer jumps out over the rail, you just got to start again because it's not yeah not okay. holding it in. So you got the gap on the bottom one this side. Yep. And then you. Put the gap on this side and wind it around. Sort of keep your finger on it so it doesn't jump out because it nearly tried to jump out then. Yep. And then it's all in there. So if you can move it like that and it's all good, yep. that's in there. Happy days. Yeah. All right. So try that. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> uh, so paranoid. It's fiddly, eh? Yeah. So you always do it on the, where the actual, um, always start where the gudgeon pin is. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll put yep. the gap of the center one on the gudgeon pin. Yep. And then um, it's gonna be 180 hard. apart on the rails, you know, on the support rails. Yep. <laughs> A lot of engine builders be watching you. <laughs> Go on. Hurry up, put it on, get it on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I got it. You gotta land. I got it. And it's doing what you said it should be doing. Beauty. I hope. Please don't jump out ever. Stay in there. Oh, that was fiddly. Alright, three more to go. No pressure. obvious what like obviously different between yeah. those two yep. yeah yeah see the see the second ring oh yep that's the second ring that's top ring because that's got the molly yep um, top on it so these uh, when you install them onto the piston they'll have a, a marking on the top of the ring which will say up or it'll be a dot on the top yep so if there's a marking the marking always outrules everything else that's the trick see the oh, yeah. little dot yep um, that always faces up so some ring, ring manufacturers with a different design second ring won't have any dot so then you look at the chamfer and see how there's a chamfer on the yep on the bottom there um, when the chamfer is on the inside of the ring it faces up and when the chamfer is on the outside of the ring it faces down but the dot always a dot or a marking that might have a little N on it or um, might say up on it um, some even have just a, a C or any sort of marking always faces up cool and the top end second so sometimes these top rings don't have any marks on them so therefore if there's no marks that means it goes either way oh okay which it's a barrel face ring yep and um, they'll go either way so these ones here don't have any markings on them. Usually the markings are sort of in this position here. Yep. Like the other one was. Yeah, you just got to wipe that. Sometimes there's a film of sort of oily stuff on there. You just wipe it off. So it can go all the way. Yeah. So I'll double check it. I've got a magnifying glass here with a lighted. I use this this light for looking at spark plugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, inside of a spark plug when you're yep. churning and messing around, you look at the porcelain. You can look right down the bottom of the porcelain and, and check the colour to see where your tunes go on. Yeah, right. So that's the top one, yeah? Yeah, that's the top one. Yeah. So the second one, dot up. This one, uh, the top one goes anyway. Cool. Uh, so now you've got the oil rings on, you can use that oil ring as a template. I'll show you. So we'll check the second rings first. So what I've done is I've wiped out inside the bore with that um, wax and grease remover. Yep. You can use throttle body cleaner or thinners or wax and grease remover. Yep. And on a clean rag and just wipe it just keep cleaning it wiping it even though i've done this already do it again yeah do it four times doesn't matter and um, some people use trans oil which is not bad because if you're gonna leave this for a while oh it and it's it. in the wrong shed with a bit of moisture or whatever that can rust because you've got it super clean now yep so the trans oil they put in there and they wipe it and trans oil's got real high detergent in it which lifts all the crap out of the home and cleans it nicely and it also oils it yeah right um, yeah a lot of engine builders use trans oil so yeah you use that as your guide so that ah, holds the ring square okay then you can check your gap because if you just put that in there like that and you go like straight look at the gap yeah it's three times the size yeah okay so people will be going oh shit I've got a huge gap but it's not straight yep so just put it in there a bit there use that so just make as sure a guide and this is nice and square. Yeah. I'll check to see what that is now. So what should this bottom... This one's the oil ring? Uh, the no, that's the second ring, that one. The scraper or yeah. whatever? Uh, yeah, the second compression scraper. Yeah. 
So yeah, just check the gap. It's probably going to be on the big size because this bore's used, you know. Yep. So if this was a, a fresh bore at home, say 86.5 on a nominal size, which they normally end up right on 86.5 or 87 mil. It's, it's usually right on that for the forged stuff, forged pistons. Um, the gap on the second ring depends on the boost, you know, because the hot, hotter the cylinder temperature, this is going to expand more and the gap's going to close up. So you want to start off with a bigger gap. Otherwise, what can happen if um, if the gap's too small, um, the, the heat will um, expand it and, it, and it'll, it'll, it'll smash the, the ring land. So the ring will come together and the force inside it in, in, in this area between the second and the top ring it will smash all that landing out. So sometimes, you know, um, people mess around with the tune with heaps of timing and the thing's detonating or something, a, a boosted motor. You'll pull it down and this ring land here will just fall on the ground. It'll be all, all smashed apart. That's ring gaps are um, a lot of cylinder temperature and um, or incorrect ring gaps. So what you'd, you'd, you'd say, uh, say this thing's gonna run 18 pounds boost, probably wouldn't, wouldn't go any tighter on the ring gap than say 14 thou. Yep. If it was running say 50, you might have to go up to 25, 28 thou ring gap. Yeah. Um, rule of thumb is um, the, the top rings, the hotter, so that's gonna expand more. So you run a bit more gap on the top than the second. Yep. Um, real high boosted one I'll uh, yeah sometimes you you run a fair bit of gap you know it's fairly fairly up there but you have to to um, to, to get it to, to live at that amount of boost you know but it's a bit of a guessing game it's a lot of experience to know what gap you're gonna run yeah so that's 16 so we're already up there you know what I mean like we don't have to worry about small gap here we won't be filing rings because the pores yeah. old you know so we've already got a lot of ring gap so we've got nearly 20 thou there yeah which is high but just means more we, boost yeah <laughs> 20 thou ring gap you could run 40 pounds in that, no problem. <laughs> oh it's a stock piston oh, and rod stock piston, yeah. <laughs> nice yeah that'll be all right i'm so, all for experimenting yeah. <laughs> See how long a stone cast piston will last. Well, I made a Neo engine last two years of my ridiculous driving, so... Yeah. Oh, I, didn't think, oh, did that. I that's think the bottom was oh, in. Yeah, it's going silly on me. That's it. Yeah. Get it straight. This is going to be excessive as well. See, look. Yeah, 20. So we've got 20 and 20, so, yeah. Oh, is that the top ring now? Yeah. So on a, you've just bored and honed it. Um, new pistons, forged pistons. The rings will out of the box are generally around, usually around 16, 18, which is fairly high for that board, board diameter. Yep. So normally out of the box, most of the rings are about where you want them, but you still got to check it. If you're running more boosts, then you open them up. Yeah. But um, generally the ring manufacturer builds a fair bit of gap into them because it's a performance motor, you know, if this was a standard engine, it's probably gonna do 200,000 Ks of normal driving, unboosted, and then it's gonna start to, to breathe. Yep. With that ring gap. Because it's an old bore, it's sort of already worn, you know, the, yep. the bore's tapered, it's bigger. There's not a lot of taper there, but you, a couple of thou, and you'd be surprised how much that does to the ring gap. So you reckon this engine will breathe a bit? I oh, know, it won't breathe from new, oh. like, as it's fresh, but. Yep. It'll, if you're putting boost into it, it's it's going to be uh, not not short lived, but it's not going to go as long as a fresh board. You know? <laughs> but it, oh, with this amount of gap, that'll be fine. Man. This is a budget build after yeah, all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you can't add the metal back. And this is a good bore actually for a, yeah. a, an old motor. It's very good condition. So that is good gap. We can't do anything with them. We're not going to file them. So we have got close on twenty and close on twenty. So yep. That'll, that'll, that'll be okay, that's... If you had 30, then you can say, someone's put the wrong rings in the packet. Yeah, okay. And that happens sometimes too. Oh, God. Because I've got one of those ring expander tools. Oh, okay, yep, yep. Tools. we might use that. This is, show them this way, because a lot of people won't have that. Yep. But this is a... See, that's a nice way of doing it there. So, 
I just put, don't want to get all on my nice shirt, so. <laughs> so you go. I should have brought you some Driscoll shirts. Oh, yeah, <laughs> New I'm, workshop I'm shirts. Some, yeah. <laughs> so there's a dot up, so what I do is I just get it, just open it up so it's in the groove. Yep. Not too far, because you, you snap it. It's only cast on one. And then just feed it over the edge. Like that. Yeah. And then it's in. And the top one will go anyway. Do the same with that. Just open it up so it's in the groove. Yeah. Open it up a little bit. It's just a matter of knowing you can feel it. Like. Yeah. And you just don't want to go too far because you, you can overstretch them as well. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're springy. You don't want to open it up. It'll not have its spring to it. You know, it's a, so do you make them 180 degrees apart from yeah, each other when you install them? Yeah, yep. yep. But obviously they spin as well. They do turn, yeah. yeah. But you, when you install them, you um, put them 180 apart, yeah. Yeah, that's so what I got. Ends your fingers, yeah. Yeah. But people don't have these. No, nah, so. if you haven't got them, you have to do it yeah. manually, you know. These, so that, these little ones are okay. but So just remember, with this whole build, it's as if we're doing it in your shed, not... Um, not with, with, all, the fancy with tools. all the fancy tools and whatnot, so it's it's to help you guys. Not it's not how Darren does every engine. <laughs> yeah, and some people have different methods of stuff too. See these pliers, I don't like them. Yeah, but if you got a real, some of the diesels with a um, uh, a tapered top ring, you, you can't open them with your fingers. They're strong. Yeah, right. Like at say so the TDs or like oh, all yeah. the diesels, they've got a. Uh, a wedge shaped ring and the groove is wedged. Yep. Um, they call it a trapezoidal ring, I think. God. They've got a crazy way they seal their top ring, but um, very hard to install. You've got to use those, you can't get them on. I just don't like the feel of them because you don't, you, it's mechanically opening it and you yeah. can't feel how far the ring's opening. Yep. I don't know. Everyone's got different ways of doing it. <laughs> Alright, so all the rings are on now. Just yeah, separated the the oh, what is it freaking called? Caps. The caps on the Conrads. Always good to line them up like say from one to six. Yep. And keep the rod and the cap together. Then you can't mix them up. So for instance, if you put that one and tried to get it on that one, yep. that inside wouldn't be round and the motor probably wouldn't turn over. Or if it did turn over, when you start it it'll knock like crazy or whatever. Yep. Not a good thing. And then just cleaning. Cleaning's key. Yeah, just wipe, man. Even if you've got a clean finger and you just wipe the bearings with your finger, you can feel anything on there. You know, yep. like it's... Um, I always like to... This rag's been used a couple of times, but newspaper's good to put... Clean newspaper down, put everything on, that way you don't get any dirt. So it doesn't cost anything to clean stuff, you know? So clean, clean, clean. Yeah. So there's anything you shouldn't use? Yeah. Like brake cleaner... It brake cleans all right. Yeah, oh, some of the air on. dries is good. Yeah, I, I use brake clean on everything. Yeah, brake clean is good. That's good stuff. The air dries. Yep. Um, a lot of aircraft, all, all the aircraft instruments and stuff are all clean in brake clean, and then it's air dried in a proper um, vessel. You know, like you're not allowed to have any dirt on any aircraft stuff. You know, it's pretty critical. You just fit them in there. Just, oh yeah. So yeah. Don't put oil in between your cap and uh, your bearing. Dry in there. Yep. yep. And um, yeah, just put the tang in. Yep. Just there, like that, and then just feed it in and just roll it in. I'll get you to show it again. Yeah, so you've got the tang. Tang in, feed it in. Just put it in there and squeeze it in. And okay. sometimes this will leave a bit of a furry crap there. Yep. It's, after this is machine, it leaves a bit of a burr sort of thing. So if you can, uh, yeah, just push the shell down and then wipe that. Yep. Just being fussy, you know. Like, it, well, you don't want that there anyway. That metal, you know, if it does scrape the back of the bearing off a bit, it's always nice to put a chamfer with the file. Yep. Before you resize them, but um, you, you sort of can't do it with these. The bolts real close, and I don't like to do it on these ones. These are pretty good. It's not leaving any material there when you're scraping that in. When you're winding that in, it's yep. not, not chewing the back of the bearing. So. That's pretty good. If it did, I'd probably just rub it with a file before I started doing this. So is there a way these bearings go? Is there a top and a bottom? No, no, they're, they're either way. Okay. Some some bearings are, look at the... So the, on the on the mains there is, yeah. The mains are, yeah. 
Yep. But on the rods. But these, they put the hole in all the shells. Yep. So, I mean, the cap's got a hole that just doesn't go anywhere. So this one's got a, a hole that so you spits the oil out, see? You need to make sure that lines up. Yeah, that's going to, because they're always drilled on the right side. You can't mess up there. Yep. But um, some bearings are. There's a cleavite. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it. There's, it's a like a H series cleavite for small block shevs and stuff. A real high end bearing, and they have an upper and a lower shell. Yeah, right. Yeah, just put a bit of it on the bearing. Don't put it on the rings. Just put normal oil on the rings. Yep. So what's this sticky crap? This is your yeah, that Lucas. Ah, Lucas yeah, again. It's good. <laughs> this is real good. There's a lot of assembly loop loops around that are. Um, not as sticky, but this stuff just hangs on. It's real good. I think the stuff I used last was that red line. Red line stuff's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, they probably get it from the same manufacturer. Anything that leaves spider webs, you know, that's usually yeah. pretty good. <laughs> so you should be able to leave it sort of sitting around for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you, you wouldn't want to. I, I, yeah, when it's assembled, yeah. You wouldn't want to leave it um, on the bench with this stuff on it because it'll collect dirt and crap. Yeah. There's always shit floating in the air, too, that you can't see, you know. Minute bits so do the tops bottoms yeah just one and then you you're ready to then you're ready to go in yeah chuck it in use normal engine oil on the this is um, a bit exciting isn't it on the uh, <laughs> this is repetition for you but oh yeah it's yeah. Just, <laughs> just another day at work. yeah I still enjoy it doing it though yeah been doing it for a long time it's still good fun how long have you been doing it um yeah 40 40 years or more far out yeah there, now that's all lubed up. So now what we can do is grab this trusty Lucas assembly oil can. It's the old train driver's oil can. <laughs> Get that sticky gear off your fingers because you don't want any of that sticky crap in the ball. Yep. That's definitely not good for ring seal. Just normal oil. Just wipe that around, like get it all around and put it on the chamfer. Yep. When the ring goes in, it helps it go in. Ah, uh, okay. Um, when you, you know, not too much, just don't want to drown the thing. Yeah. Wouldn't want to use gearbox oil on here. Just a, a normal engine oil. Yep. A lot of people use CRC. A lot of engine builders will just put CRC. Oh, yeah. And they'll install the ring with CRC. Um, I'm not a real fan of that, but a bit of oil because if there's any moisture in there, if it sits around, you know, the oil, as the ring goes in, will scrape it on the bore. Yep. And then as soon as it starts, it's got a bit of lube while it starts. Yeah. That's what it needs. Because these don't have oil piston squirters, do they? No. Nah, that would be 30, doesn't it? No. Nah. All the 25s and 26s in that do. So now we've got to get the crank at its extent back. Yep. So we're not going to install it with the journal there because the bolts are going to hit it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we're going to put it there. Yep. And that'll allow... We don't have to hold it. A lot of people put tubes here over the journal. Oh, uh, yeah. With these these motors here, you can put that there. You can get the ring just in, all the rings just in. Then you can go this end and guide your rod bolts. So you don't have to worry about what's going on that side. Yep. While you're dealing with your rings here, see? So what we'll do is just all that, just real small amount. You know, don't have to put heaps on it, just wipe it around. Yep. Then what I'll do then is I'll put the second ring there and the top ring gap around 180 away. So yeah. one gap there and one gap 180. Cool. So the front of the piston, front of the motor, number one. Yes, number one. I'll come around this way. Just get it to about there. Yep. Get my, so um, normally you'd have it on a engine stand engine like this stand, to yeah, make it easier, but... We run out. <laughs> He's got a bit on. <laughs> They're all taken up. <laughs> Just got to be careful when you squeeze that together that the ring isn't sitting up on the side of the piston. Uh, you have a broken ring as you're squeezing it, see? Yep. As you squeeze it, bit of a trick. You can sort of see it flexing. Yep. You, you know what's in there. So, what I'll do is get the piston straight, and that band has got to be against the block. So, I'll just tap that yep. to the block, and I'll sort of forcing the pliers so that it goes against the deck yeah because if you hit it this tends to want to fly out yep so while you're squeezing this get the right amount of load on it so the rings are compressing and just 
just tap it in. Make sure the band doesn't jump. See the band's trying to jump away from the deck? Yep. That's the pain in the ass that normally happens. No, not going. This is where everyone usually messes up here. See the oil ring rail? That can jump out uh, and sit in that little gap. Yes, yep. And then you're knocking it in and it's tight, but it's going in. And what it's doing is if that rail was up in the air up above where it's supposed to be, it'll make a big gouge in the bore. Uh, big trouble, man. These little thin rings are a real problem. That's it, mate. That's it. That's what you want. Like so that. you just stop there and yep. then fish in there and you, you want to fill the, the rod bolts. So what I'm doing is I've got my hand around the rod journal like a clamp. Yep. So the rod bolts are not going to hit it. Yep. And then I'm I'm grabbing the two rod bolts yep. with my fingers and then just guiding them onto the journal. If you're not sure, you can put two, two bits of plastic tube over them. Oh, yeah. So what I'm doing now is I'm just bringing it up with my fingers. So I'm not going to belt the rod bolt into the journal. Yeah. Because if I hit the rod bolt on the journal, I'm going to make a, a dent on it, and that's going to chew the bearing up. That's it, man. Boom. And now you can put the cap on. Yeah, and then what I do then is I check that that the shell is still in, in place. See the shell is level with the side? Yep. So sometimes the shell can turn. Yeah, okay. And you don't want to put the cap on with the shell in the rod. So you make sure that the shell is level either side. And then we are good. So when you're saying that, you want to make sure that the cap is, is dead flush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so the, the metal of the rod and the bearing shell is level either side. Yep. So if you install it, you wouldn't want this to happen. So you wouldn't want the shell to be like that. Yeah, okay. No. You, you're not going to be doing it. Yeah. So it's got to be level. <laughs> yep. So number one cap where we had it so we can't mix them up. Yep. You're making this look easy. And then, so you've got the two tangs and they both face together. Both both of those bearing tangs are on the same side. So always put the tangs together. Two tangs together. There is a couple of manufacturers that make a rod that's actually tangs are opposite. Yeah, right. There's a real old Bedford truck that had the tangs opposite. There's a Mercedes. And a lot of BMWs do it. Yeah, wow. Well. Six on the BMWs do it with tangs opposite. But all the Jap stuff's all tangs together. All holding and shev and Fords all tangs together. All the H beams and things are all tangs together. So yeah, you just guide that on. Yeah. Don't want to get that on and belt it. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is the shell's going to fall out and it's going to move and yeah. you want it to fit in nicely without any force or anything, you know? Yep. And there's molly on the threads already from yep. when we resize them, so we don't have to molly them up again. That's already heaps of molly on there. Because that's all going to come out when you do your first oil change, isn't it? Oh, yeah, most of it mixes with the oil. The, yeah. Like with all the assembly lubes and stuff on the first oil change, you get a lot of um, the oil will look really black, and, but that's just normal. Yeah, what were we here? 50. Oh, 54 God. pounds, I reckon it was. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> So there, I've got a snap on digital, digital torque wrench, but the patches are going flat out. So I have to resort to the old clicker. That's a Norbar. Oh yeah. Sig Chrome. So a good one, Norbar. Um, a snap on digital ones are beauty because it tells you angles as well as the torque. Yeah. Like this thing here. Yeah. So beautiful wrench. Now, got to get some of the batteries that went flat yesterday. Them, they're really yeah. nice. That'll do. That's the one I got. Angles, um, torque and angles. Because when we do the 625 bolts, we have to do a torque and then 90 degrees, don't we? Uh, Is that right? No. No? No, 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 they're just a straight torque. But some of the torque to yield bolts, like um, a lot of the newer stuff, is uh, is like, say, 20 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Yep. And that wrench is good because at the 90 degrees, it'll tell you what tension you've got. Ah. Yep. Cool.
Sure. And then I always get the, the rod and just move. You can, you can rock it. Yeah. I can actually rock that on most motors and go, yeah, that's got a thou clearance or that's got four thou, you know, by rocking it. Yeah, true. It's a bit of a, you know, some, if you're not checking clearances on a motor or something and you're just putting it together quickly, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, but sometimes you get caught in those situations, you just go, all right, that's moving. Yeah, that's got two and a half thou or whatever. Yeah. So as long as you can move that, if that was tight, then we could have the small end bush bound up on the pin. Yep. Or it might not have enough side clearance here. There might be burrs on the rods, which we know there's no burrs because we've already checked that when we resized and I had a look and if there's any damage or anything on the sides, someone had been hitting it with a hammer or something was going on, you'd, you'd file that or machine it. Yep. But say we get to this point, we go, there's no movement. We've got to find out why there's no movement. The conrod could be bent, which we shouldn't get this far. We, you know, we, we've got to check that rod for straightness before we even get this point. But say if it was tight, then we go, well, it's got clearance because we've measured it. Um, the rod's straight, because we know we've, met, we've checked them. The pin was loose on the gudgeon pin. Why is it tight? And you look in there and you can see the rod moving up on the pin. You go, huh. you know, like it's got no no side clearance. So we'd have to pull that out and then we'd machine the sides of the rods down. But that one's all good, right? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, see that movement there? You're giving me a heart attack. No, 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 I'm just scaring you. So there's pro <laughs> probably, um, I'm just telling people what to look for. Yeah. You know, if they have trouble with something, then they know what to look for. But that movement there, that's pretty right that yep. side clearance is good because that's where your that's sort of your uh, relief valve part of the oil system on the rod yep because it's all in into the main then into the rod then into the bearing journal and the oil's spraying out of there so if this was tight the oil wouldn't get out so the oil would get hot yep so on some motors real high horsepower ones you want to run a lot of clearance so it lets everything move around and it gets the oil out of there quick doesn't really do too much to oil pressure, um, but uh, on these Nissans, that's pretty well, they're, they're spot on. Like, like You never really have to touch them, like the machining on the crank width and the rod width, they're, they're always like that. They're so easy, you know. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. One down, eh? One down. Now what we can do now, we've got one in. This is what I always do as a practice when I've got one in. I just check my deck height. Bring it up the top, and it's probably about five thou below, which is nice. So what you can do here is you can run a forty thou head gasket. So you run a one mil thick head gasket. Yep. So say if that piston was sticking up, we'd have to get a uh, the correct thickness head gasket. But that's nice. That's just down the, down the bore a little bit, which makes it easier. Cool. So what size head gasket do you reckon I should uh, run on this? One one mil. One mil? Yeah, like an MLSR Permasil four layer. Yep. A one mil one. I can get that for you during the week if you want. Yeah. One of those. Where is one? Uh, one up there. Oh, no. one lying around here. MLSR. Maybe not. It's got to be one. Can't find it in the jungle of parts. Yeah. It's one on the back wall that looks second hand. That's the one. Yeah. That's the style. That's just one I use to check things with sometimes. That's, oh, yep. That's the MLSR multi layer. Yep. They're four layers of steel. They're nice. That's not Cometic or whatever, is it? Uh, Cometic is a three layer. Oh, yep. I prefer the four layer ones because they, they, they've got a nice way they seal. Yep. So that they've got a. There's beads on the gasket that sort of lock together. As it squeezes together, it's got like a bead. And they. they um, because I always got told to use like the Nido ones because they got a, a ring seal on them or yes, something. Yes, that's like these have two. These, oh, okay. these are the same. Yeah, yeah, there's um, see how they got the two center, uh, yep. center layers. Then you've got that raised up piece. Yep. Then on the other side, it's flat, so that'll push more in that area. And around the chamber, which is where you want the ceiling, it's got a bead as well. So oh, yep. the two stainless center bits, 
and then the outer have got that 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 bead there. Cool. Which pushes down, forces more on the on the head, you know, on the area. Top faces the front, and we've got number six. Do you need that turned again? Oh no. No, I've got it facing yep. there outside. See that? That's yeah. you, that's a good thing that happened. If you kept hitting that, it's gonna damage the oil ring. Yep. It'd probably go in and then you'd have an oil ring hanging up in the air with big scratches in the ball. Yeah. So well, you can usually feel if it's if it doesn't move on each hit, you don't keep going. Yep. And you're only lightly sort of tapping it. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of people I've seen like really yeah. play into it. It's like, man, <laughs> I don't know what's so number six is there, uh, in. Two tangs together. Yep. And then just slide it on. Yep. yep. Don't force it on. No. Sometimes the caps are tight on the rod bolts too. Yep. Um, they're a bit of a pain in the ass when they're like that because you 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 get it on there. You sort of have to hold this side of the piston with the hammer and get a like a rocking motion on the oh. cap to get it on the rod bolts. Yep. And then sometimes you even have to wind it, wind it down with the nuts even either side. I hate it when they're like that. Sometimes it depends on the rod, you know. H-beams are nice because you've got the bolt. The cap screw. Yep. Four more to go. So then we turn that around so that one's up. Oh yeah. That'd be number five and number two to go in there. guys the bottom end is now done massive thanks to Darren for doing this and um, yeah that is the budget build bottom end RV30 so long story short we put the ARP rod bolts in uh, wasn't extremely necessary but we just did it uh, because we could standard standard rods standard pistons new rings new AECL race bearings uh, did all the crank work, so this is obviously part four of the uh, four-part video series and obviously there's still a lot of dressing up that needs to be doing but I'm going to do that back in my shed uh, and show you guys what I've basically purchased from Darren to make this RV30 last for as long as possible. So there's obviously a sump um, that he makes and sells, there's oil restrictors which we've already put in uh, head drain which you can see here you can buy off Darren um, he purposely puts them a little bit on the piss so it clears the bell housing and there's no issues there with the fitting here he has a um, specific hose length with a 90 uh, that goes straight down onto his sumps here so um, I'll explain all that on my uh, next video when I'm assembling the whole engine uh, so now we're gonna quickly run over what you need to do to the head uh, which you can do all at home uh, with the with the twin cam head, like hydraulic uh, VCT one or an EO head. We'll go over all of them uh, right now, so you guys understand what you need to do to make a head fit. Because I think we might have gone over it a little bit in part one, uh, but we're just going to do it all again. All right. Okay, so we have two heads here that were mine that I've broken. <laughs> Um, and Darren's just going to give us a quick rundown of what you need to do to make a 25 head suit well fit an RB30, correct? Yes. So what happens is the RB30 block, this is an RB30 gasket, which is the same as a 26. Um, so this water hole here is a different shape. So that's a 25 head with that shape water hole. 
and that's the oil feed that feeds the VCT on the inlet cam. So we want to weld that solid and run the VCT feed externally. So on the VCT side of it, there's um, that's the switch that turns the VCT oil flow on and off with the ECU. There's a big hexagon thing coming out of here with a plug on it. So what we'll do is we'll drill into the gallery here. So you see internally there's a channel just in past the threads. So that's the channel we want to pick up on. So we want to drill about here and, and tap an eighth, eighth MPT or eighth BSPT thread in there. So then we want a fitting that comes out here. We run a 90 degree fitting behind the backing plate through that channel to the other side of the block onto the oil pressure um, uh, hole on the um, oil filter side of the motor to feed the VCT. So on that VCT um, hose, we're gonna run a dash three Teflon speed flow hose size. Um, and on the end of the fitting, Speedflow make a small restrictor. That's a one mil restrictor. So that will restrict the oil to the VCT um, and give it the correct oil flow. So we don't want to run a dash four hose with a full oil feed to the to the VCT externally. We want to run it with a, a 40 thou restrictor in it. So what we do is weld that solid and then weld this water hole solid. And then if you stick that oh, RB30 okay. gasket on. Yep, because otherwise you'll get water in there. Oh yeah, it's a, yeah, 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 nothing yeah. will work. So, um, yeah, just weld it solid, weld the VCT hole, weld that uh, factory water hole solid, and then we're left with this shape. So I just mark it out with a texture, and what I do is I, I drill three holes here and grind that channel out. Then I just lay this edge over because there's um, you, you can't grind that whole hole out because there's stuff under there like this. So the oil hole and things under there. So you just lay it over, yep. just so the water flows through it. And cool. um, then it'll seal all the way around. So if you if you put that on the 30 block, it's gonna pour water. Yep. Because you see how close that is there. Yep. It's just gonna pour out the sides. So that um, VCT feed and everything, do you yep. sell that yourself? Um, if someone wants to buy it? Yeah, if they want to buy, I can make it up. Like yep. hose, yeah, that's easy, like speed flow hosing. So it would be pretty, pretty Good if you had like a full RV30 kit, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that'd be an idea. Yeah, or well, I did years ago, it was very popular this combination, and I used to sell quite a few of those VCT pipes. But most of the time now, people make them themselves, but I can make that up yeah. if they want it. Yeah, cool, that's no problem. So, yeah, you just hit up um, the Lewis Engines website and uh, email Darren, it's probably the best way, yeah? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, and then, yeah, so weld that solid. Um, no VCT hole, um, grind the hole out to suit the gasket and lay that edge over. Yep. And that's sort of it really with those. Um, yeah, that's, uh, and you know, the head head drain on the back, you can fit that. Yeah, I just spoke about that on the and other engine. Yeah, we can explain how that goes on. Real quick. When which, you fit that. You can... Which you can buy off the Lewis engine site as well. Yeah. Um, that's really all you need to do with to put it onto a, a it, 30, like the fitment of it. But um, So all, all the studs, they're all the same? Same, everything's yep. the same, yeah. Um, if the guys want to use a non-VCT? Uh, what is there? There's a there's a head that some people look for. It's a normally aspirated R32 head, I think that's no VCT. Yep. I reckon, from memory. There's one There's one model, but they're hard to get. Most of the people use these hydraulic yep. ones because they're, they're they're a fairly common head to, to find. Not so much now. Um, they're getting a little bit hard to find now. They've all sort of gone through a few rebuilds and blow ups and things. They're hard to get <laughs> nice ones. Just like these two. Uh, so yeah, the, so we just run a like a fitting out of there with a 90 degree. Yep. Or a 45 or something and just sneak it out around. You sort of got to put your plate on and have a look where it's gonna fit, and then you just run your hose down to the um, pressure port behind the oil filter. So with a 40 thou restrictor in it. Then that will feed oil straight into that gallery where yep. it normally gets its oil from through the head. 
but because you know they'll all pump will pump oil into here up into here into this channel but we're welding that up solid because of our gasket um, misalignment here yeah then we have to feed oil to this to operate that VCT unit on the front of the the um, the motor because it's oil pressure operated this VCTs are um, it's like a couple of gears that mesh together they're helical gears yep and the, the higher the oil pressure gets it moves in and out of the helical cut gear and it changes the camshaft timing yeah right so that that is an oil pressure port with a switch on the end that the computer switches that on at a certain revs and switches it off at a certain revs I think it's 1800 to 3000 or 3200 or something um, then once it gets oil pressure then that unit can um, it moves with with oil pressure so as the motor revs up the oil pressure gets higher so this thing will, will turn moves the cam advances the camshaft inside that hub yep it's not a good thing to use on a on an on a engine with a set of cams and heavy springs it's probably the only combo i'd use that vct unit in is um uh, a standard cam with a little bit heavier springs because I have seen them break off the front of the cam and go through the radiator and that, that, that VCT unit. Jesus. They, they explode, yeah. And um, yeah, when people mess around with the oil flow, they can explode. I've seen people just run, <laughs> run them dry with no oil feed and they'll eventually break. You know? Jesus. So you've got to have some. 40 thou restrictor is good. Yep. Um, I mean, you'll see this hole here that feeds it and in the block there's a restrictor. It's about a mil and a half or two mil hole. So we're actually restricting half the oil to yep. it because the oil ends up in the head when it exhausts out of it. it. It ends up into the head, so you end up with more oil in the head. So you don't want to just flood that. Yep. Um, a 40 thou hole works nice. I've, I've tried them quite a bit and they, the, the unit still operates how it should with, with a 40 thou restrictor in it. So, awesome. Yeah. Cool, and we'll go over that when I dress the engine all together and yeah. whatever else. So, so if, they're, if they're doing it at home, they can sort of look at the, strip the head. It's always a good plan to strip the head because if it's been, see how this one's caught some rings or something's gone through it? Those bits might have gone in this valve seat and damaged it. So for the time to pull the valves out and check everything, it it's it's good value to do that you know why you got this apart yeah um and you generally look at the seats and go yeah well, they look they're not pitted the valve face looks okay you can get lapping paste and lap that if you wanted to to get away with it cheaply at home but it is a good idea to machine these and 100 percent definite to reface the head yep because uh you you want to get the right surface finish on it even if someone checks that with a straight edge and goes, oh, it's within a thou or whatever, just just face it and get the right finish on it. That's 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 a must to do that. Cool. And then you know you can save money at home by getting your own valve sim seals, fitting them up. Uh, you've lapped your seats in. You can put the head together. Um, you can buy a set of heavy duty um, drop on springs. You can fit them on yourself. And if you're using the standard cams with them, that'll all work fine. Um, you know, something that's around 18 to, to 24 pounds boost, that'll, that'll work. Yep, yep. But any more than that, you're going to have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but that's generally awesome. the plan with the head, you know. Cool. Um, if any valves are bent, you do have to look inside there. See how this guide's broken? Yep. So what's happened there is the valves hit the piston and the, the valves cocked over and smashed the guide. My bad. Um, and what happens with that, there's another good thing why people say, oh, it's a good second-hand head, I'll just bolt it on the motor. Well, it's not a good thing to not have a look at it because if it's gone through a blow-up or something's gone through it, I've actually seen bits of a guide, like people looked at it and haven't seen the guides cracked, put it on the engine, and then they got a bit of guide going through the turbo. Old faithful camera just died on me, so I've just grabbed the GoPro. Hopefully the audio is not heaps different, but... Let's get straight back into it. So, I think it cut out when we were talking about, um, we pretty much ended anyway, but. I reckon we, yeah, we explained the VCT. Yeah. But that's a VCT unit on the inlet cam. So that internally, um, it, 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 it moves. It changes the cam timing. Yep. There is adjustment on the back. 
so you can mess around with that. Um, can undo it, and that alters how far it moves. But the factory settings usually as far as it'll go on one side. Um, but yeah, you can play around with it if you if you want to. So if you want to get rid of that, um, just run a couple of sets of RB20 cams, a yeah. couple of uh, RB20 cams, and both the RB20 cams have no VCT, like the inlet doesn't have the VCT. So what you can do is you, you've got your exhaust gear, your fixed exhaust gear on, on there with the VCT. So two RB20 cams, you can get another exhaust gear and put on. If you don't have, you know, you just so you can get just, one off another motor or, or even the RB20 ones are the same. You can use an exhaust gear on the inlet. You, you can, yeah, because you, they're um, double drilled here. See this, well these, um, cheap gears, you can get these off eBay, there's quite a few people that got them, a couple hundred bucks or 150 a pair I think. That's the way I'd be going because you can mess around and move these and get your power in different positions and stuff. So it's probably a, a cheap thing to go and just get a pair of these. But when you do buy these cheaper ones, see how there's a washer under the under the, under the the socket head there? Yep. Got to get a, a better style washer and fit under there. A lot of the cheaper gears are, are just got a bolt with this dodgy spring washer <laughs> and they don't grip properly and they, they, they're crappy. So just spend a bit of time and get a nice washer under there and some nice screws and the cheap gears can turn into a nice unit. And then that way you've got two, you can adjust them. So you can play around on the dyno, change the exhaust cam, change the inlet cam, see where you can get your most power delivery. You know, you can move the cams together so you give them more overlap, yep. which will increase the, the the bottom end normally on some combos. You know, it just depends on the turbo and that. You can change that, you can move that around so it gives you an, another tuning thing, you know? So for, RB... For not a lot of money. Yeah, so RB20 cams can bolt straight in, you don't they'll, have to do the, anything? Yeah, they'll go straight in, yeah. The the silver top RB20, so yep. the hydraulic RB20. Not the early red top, that's a different camshaft. So out of an old silver top RB20, two cams, the drive's the same. So if you're messing around with R33, 3233, these have got the spine drive for the um, timing sensor. Um, the RB20's got the same on the exhaust cam. Yep. Same, same spline, little half moon drive inside the cam. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but Darren's gonna fix these heads up for me. Yeah. Uh, I've actually got four here that need fixing. <laughs> yeah, so we could, so a couple of these heads here, these two are probably the best out of the ones you've got, but yep. they've had a lot of something's gone here and dented it. Yeah, and I it's heard broken it the I've, exhaust guide. Yeah, I've dropped. So all the rest of it looks fixable, you know, there's no problem. So we need to put a, another guide in there and a, take this insert out and put another insert in. And, um, all the seats and face it and then that head's a goer and this one here needs a bit more work this has had a lot of yeah. a lot of stuff going through it here so um, a couple of the dents I mean things like that on that quench area there by the time it's faced it's going to be a, a couple of little dots there which is nothing but this is major so we just run a weld across there yep and then it'll look nice when it's faced and um, there's a broken guide in this one too I think yeah so there's an inlet guide that's broken so we're going to Get that out and replace that. Um, to buy those guides from Nissan, um, yeah, it's all eight weeks wait and Jesus. dear as poison. So what I do with these is I um, uh, use a, a bronze guide in there. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, so, you know, when you're doing, a say, an RB26 race head with a full port job, you'll take the guides out and replace them with bronze ones. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll modify an RB26 one. So um, I use these guys here, here from a guy, C-H-E. Yeah. They're beautiful. And um, so, yeah, I'll just fit up an RB26 one and modify that to fit, and you'll have one bronze one in there. That'll be fine. Cool. The motor won't know. <laughs> <laughs> My motor can't see. <laughs> so yeah, that, that'll, that'll work, that one. Awesome. Uh, this one, that, that'll be that one. We can repair that. Same thing then. We'll cut all the seats, face the valves, and put new seals and face the head. 
And if you want to run the VCT, we can drill this hole here. Yep. Or if you don't want to run the VCT again, we've already got this welded, so the motor's not going to feed any oil into that. So we can run the RB20 cams with two adjustable gears, and we can buy, you can either put the hex thing in there and just leave it there with no switch on it, or just unplug it. Um, or Speedflow make a nice little socket head plug. I think that's, I'm not sure, I reckon that's 18 by 1.5. In the Speedflow catalog, there's a little socket head plug that with an O-ring on it, and just fits in there and looks oh, nice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like 15 bucks or something. Cool. Which makes it look a bit better. Pretty much everything we can do at the moment with yeah. the RV30 build. And then, um, yeah, obviously dress it up when I get home. And uh, by that time, Darren would have fixed these. And yeah, we'll quickly go over what he's done on the head after he's fixed them. And then I'll take it home and, and put it all together. So it's bloody exciting. Now I just need to find a car to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're just going to have a quick rundown on oil pumps. I'll let Darren take it away. But I'd never seen the inside of an RB31. Yeah, that's a stocky, that's a stocky RB30 pump. So that's what's called a spur gear design pump with these pointed teeth. Um, you see these gear sets in auto trans oil pumps. And like see how thin that is. They usually snap straight through from that point there, straight through. Jeez. Um, not a good thing to use. Normally, on a single overhead cam motor, these will break oil pump gears at like 5,800, 5,600. They'll smash the gear. Put that on a turbo motor, it'll break straight away. Um, so yeah, that's the design of them. They run a thin spur gear. So the spur gear pump is not a good design for cavitation and the oil delivery. It's very pulsy and cavitating. It's a it's just crap. Piece of crap. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of that and what you can go to generally is uh um r32 r33 rb25 or 26 have this type of pump on them um and you can tell see this one here's an n1 so the first go-to thing is that screw hole see how this n1 has got that screw hole there yep and rb25 26 has no screw hole mm -hmm. so with a 25 26 pump the outer gear rotor is a bigger diameter so with an n1 gear oh man they're lucky eh? so with an n1 gear see the outer diameter is, is smaller so you put the two together see that 25 pump's got a bigger outer gear inner gear is the same so you're going to get more meat in between. See the N1 on the top's thinner in that area. 25 on the bottom's like nice and meaty here. In saying that, I've never seen an outer gear break. It's normally from the flat here yep. through that root of that tooth. Split straight through there on either side normally. I actually um, have one of these break on me at idle. Smash apart, yeah. Yeah. It, um, <laughs> it sees the whole engine up because yeah. that got locked up. Yeah. And it locked up the crank. It locked it up, yeah. Lucky it was only at idle. So these, like the factory N1 pump comes out with uh, what they call a, a, a sintered iron um, gear set, which is metal that's um, compressed together. It's not a forging. It's not cut out of one piece like a billet gear is. So that's why they're weak. Cause it's, I mean, if you threw that in the ground, it just split. Oh, yeah. Um, so my favorite one is RB25 R32, R33 pump. Yep which comes out on the 25 hydraulic motors series one and two and the um gdr rb26 has it um a little bit different relief valve design between the 25 hydraulic and the 26 pump but the pump itself is the same structure and they have that bigger outer gear that's my favorite one to put a set of billet gears in is this type but most people will uh, like the N1 is a Nissan aftermarket pump. You can buy them new from Nissan or they'll come out on an R34 or a Neo engine has the the um, N1 style pump. So the inside of the pump's a little bit different design, which is minimal in what it does to to the oiling flow, you know, the oiling delivery. Yep. Um, but 
yeah, the, generally if someone's got one of these off a of Neo, put a billet set of gears in here, or ideally hunt one of these down, strip it out, check the housing, make sure there's no grooves in that, because sometimes these motors ingest a bit of metal. You see how this has got all metal? Yep. That's generally normally what, what happens here. They get a bit of scratching. You want to have a look inside this area here, make sure it's not grooved up and chewed, and no, no um, metal has gone through these surfaces here because that'll just bleed off oil pressure. Yep. That one's pretty good, like a bit of wet and dry that'll come up. Um, it's probably as bad as you'd want to see it. But some of these old pumps, you can get them, and they're mint, you know, nothing's gone through the motor, um, and they're just like new. There's no wear in them at all, you know. Put a billet set of gears in there and they go again. So that's the stocky 30, N1, and... I call these GDR pumps, which RB26 or 25 hydraulic have them. Yep. Some early silver top RB20s have them as well. And there is another pump with a thinner gear, same sort of design here, same amount of screws, which comes out on a an RB20 as well. There and they're thinner gear. Um, you can't get billet gears for them, so you don't use them. You can't get billet gears for these, so that whole pump is trash. Yep. You got to start with a turbo RB pump, which has these gear rotor design teeth, yep. which is more efficient way of delivering oil rather than this yeah. spur gear crap. <laughs> Keep that in auto trans oil pump. I don't even know why they don't use this sort of thing in auto trans oil pumps, but they've always used that sort of gear in a auto trans, you know? Yeah, it's right. weird, yeah. So, um, so we figured out what pump we need to use. Yeah. So it's yep. that one. Yep. Um, and now, can you get caught out with these gaskets? You were saying you can, before? yeah. So the, if you get an RB30 gasket set generally they come with this gasket yep which has got this hole here because rb 30 has got a, a funny looking boss on the pump on the front of the pump so they oh yeah they have this area here and there is a later rb 30 that doesn't have that boss but if you use an rb 30 gasket on one of these turbo pumps you have oil oil leaking out of that hole there see uh, and you'll be wondering where that oil's coming from <laughs> so a slight little bit there yeah it just well. pours over everything <laughs> so best thing to do is get one of these from this and they're like 10 bucks or something what is it an rb25 one rb25 26 pump yep that number you can just ring up nissan's and um they'll have them usually have them in stock or melbourne um and that's got the right shape across here yep for the rb30 with the 25 pump That'll work fine. But if you see these blue gaskets, you'll get caught with these. So don't use them. They're troublemakers then. They're just as good as the RB30 pumps. Ah. I'm in the bin. And then also, what happens is the these Phillips head screws at the factory, you've got to get them out with a um, uh, like a, a driver. So you hit you hit that and that turns. Yeah. Yep. Impact driver. And usually they get damaged. You can't do them up tight. So I use these stainless socket head um, screws. Yep. And you just put dob of blue Loctite on there. Uh, if you use red red Loctite, you'll never get them out. Yep. So on aluminium, you always use the blue Loctite. But don't put too much, just a, a drop on there. That way, then you can get them out if you do need to later. Yeah. And they won't they won't shake out. If you, if you don't put anything on them on a real high horsepower, high revving motor, they they I have seen them come out of the yeah out of the, lose out of the pump. Pressure, don't you? Yeah, that'll be the end of that. Um, Bloody hell. Thing and then there's relief valve stuff as well. If you've got when you're messing around um with this style pump on a 26 the relief valve pressure is very high because it's a mechanical um camshaft and the uh, they run a, a lot of oil pressure and there's one model rb25 as well with a, a funny shaped nut on here and that has a lot of oil pressure which um only fills the cylinder head more yeah so you can reduce that pressure you you want about like um 60 70 pounds when it's revving flat out when it's hot that's ample so you got to check that as well because you can get caught out with that relief valve pressure where the gauge will just be swinging right off the clock and it's just filling the head up with oil so the way to check that is to put the relief valve in in the hole so there he is so yeah that goes in with the dish outwards this is only a dirty old pump. We're not putting this on the motor. Yeah. So, yeah, put the spring in. 
and how you measure that you want it you want it 10 mil above the face of the the, the um, hole so as a spring sitting in there without compressing it this thing's got about 13 14 so that's going to have a fair bit of oil pressure so you really want it to sit at rest about there about one mil so 10, you, 10 mil yeah uh, sorry yeah. Yeah, one mil yeah 10 mil <laughs> <laughs> yeah one mil be nice um so yeah but so say you've got uh well that's three mil too much so you can put washers under here they run an alloy washer on on some of these pumps i think that one's got one set an alloy, alloy washer oh, yeah. you can steal some of them off some of the old rb30 pumps and that and stack them up you can put two in there and that'll that'll give you the right distance then so what i did last time was i put washers in there to make that'll increase it okay yeah that... so the little washers that go in there yeah that'll increase the pressure uh, okay so because you're putting more tension on the spring so yep. what what that is that's a that's a, a valve that lets off the pressure so as the motor as the thing turns and it builds up pressure that it's going into that cavity then when it gets up to the pressure that that's going to let off it just lets all the oil out and holds it at that pressure so that's what controls it so if you didn't have that it'd just keep building up pressure building up pressure <laughs> um, who knows how much you'd have but that's the, the system tap the oil pressure tap <laughs> um yeah so you've got to check that's pretty important to check that um sure. get that distance correct there um do whatever you've got to do to get that 10 mil distance and you'll have about 60 70 pounds with that yep you know some of these springs are well this is a double spring some of the pumps come out with just a single spring um and once with the single spring um you you, you I always try to use a double because a double at 10 mil, I know is going to be the right uh, oil pressure. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Thanks for that. Yeah. That's bloody good. Easy, and I'll get them ready for people so they can just bolt the pump straight on the motor. Yep. It's a lot, lot easier. I'll set that thing, the right tension, give them a gasket, put a seal in it, 600 bucks, 700, 700 bucks, I think, and then they're done. They're out of there. Another thing you can buy from Lewis Engines. <laughs> yeah, I think seven, no, seven ninety nine. Sorry, it's getting dearer. They'll be on your side. It's getting dearer every time I measure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's seven. It is seven ninety nine. Seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred. So, by the, but when you look at it, by the time you find one of these, like a billet set of gears is four forty. Yeah, last and, time and I you got paid labour, five hundred yeah. screws, you got a seal, you got a gasket, you got, you know, yeah, to get a pump that you can just put on a motor, eight hundred bucks is. It's just right, you know. By the time you buy a new N1, you're going to spend 450, and you're going to put 440 gears in there. You've spent more. Yeah, exactly. And I consider that to be better than the N1. Than the N1 because yep. of this gear, minimal, but you know, just if you start fresh, look for one of these if you can get them. Cool. All right, no worries. Mm. Well, that's pretty much all we can talk about with that, isn't it? I think we've done the oil pump yeah. things. What else is there on an oil pump that catches people? That's about it, I think. That's Relief valve. Yeah. Get rid of this ugly setup. Junk. Bin. Gaskets and nightmare. More awesome. screws and gears. And um, if you get stuck, you can just hit up Darren and buy it from him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Not a problem. Awesome. <laughs>